Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome to another episode of the Oak Mountain ACODs. Well, this video is going to be all about removing bottlenecks on the firewood processor. And more specifically, we have a bottleneck with our sawdust removal right now. And I'd like to get some sort of a solution in place for that because it's kind of annoying uh, to get a sawdust plug or have to stop and shut down and clear that and uh, then take time to move the sawdust away from the machine every so often. So uh, we're going to show you what we're up against and then we're going to show you one of the solutions that we brought to the table. Stick around. So if you've watched some of our previous videos, you've probably seen a pile of sawdust like this and even bigger in behind the processor when we're working around. It doesn't take very long to build a pile of sawdust. Uh, it's kind of surprising, but uh, you, can get, you can get a very large pile here off of three or four cord of firewood. And right now what we do with it is it basically comes out a chute, it falls on the ground, and then we have to stop and shovel it away or shovel it into the bucket of the backhoe to clean it up and get rid of it. Uh, now I'm not a high production outfit, uh, but I don't like to waste time unnecessarily. And I find this to be a time waster. So I'm looking for a solution uh, to remove that little bottleneck from the outfit. So we were shoveling sawdust out of the way and I was watching uh, Jeff Hogue down in Nova Scotia, one of his videos that he has on YouTube with a firewood processor. And uh, he's called the Log Father, by the way. You should check him out. Uh, and I saw that he had a garbage can underneath the end of his sawdust spout. And I thought, boy, I'm not very smart. I didn't think of that. So uh, I immediately got myself a garbage can and set it up. And uh, that was an improvement. You know, basically that'll fill up with sawdust and then I'll just take that and dump it down over the hill that we have here. So that was an improvement. But my barrel fills up with rain once in a while. I'm not really good at picking things up and putting them away at the end of the day. So sometimes the wind would take it and blow it down across the field and I'd have to go on a scavenger hunt for it. So this still isn't the best solution for me. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to start up the Hacky Pilke Raven 33 firewood processor and uh, Karen's just going to walk around the back side of the machine instead of the front side of the machine and kind of take some shots of the sawdust coming out of this and into the bucket just for reference. And she'll probably look right up into the end of the sawdust spout here too so that you can see what's going on inside. Okay, let's get her started up. Okay guys, so this is problem number two. I still have firewood on the table, but I've had to shut down the processor. So let's take a look and we'll show you what's going on. So if you look up through here, what you see is kind of a plugged chute. And we're going to walk around to the front side and show you what it looks like from there. So Karen will get a close-up down in here, but you can see that uh, the sawdust is to go down through this hole and a little bit through the hole on the top and right out the chute. But what do we have in here? We've got a plug chute. So I've still got firewood on the table and I would love to keep processing, but I've got to shut down and clear that out. Let's go back around and take a look at how we do that. Now, normally I would have a pile of sawdust here and I'd have to crawl over the top of it to get to this side because I'm left-handed. And I got this handy dandy little gardening rake and trimmed it up so it would fit up into the sawdust chute. But here I go, pulling that sawdust out into the bucket. And then as you get up in here further, the spout gets smaller and you have to put your rake on an angle and get it into the sawdust. And it's a real time killer, real waste of time. Karen will get a close up in here of what's, what's gonna happen. You gotta go all by feel and try not to get your rake caught up on the metal. Try not to scratch your arms on the side of the metal out here. Pull all that sawdust out. There, now we're ready to, to start again. 
Now I find that with bigger wood, that will fill up quicker, and I don't know, I guess with the bigger wood, maybe I'm losing the velocity of, uh, of the saw blade, and it's starting to throw the sawdust just a little bit closer uh, than it normally would, and letting it build up. Uh, but uh, the other thing that I've noticed too, is that first thing in the mornings, if there's condensation inside of this, um, it's catching the sawdust, obviously. The moisture's catching the sawdust and it's allowing it to build up quicker. So this is a problem and I'm looking for a solution. So then I've got this uh, little stick that I keep here and it's just the right size. So I'm trying to get everything cleaned out, ready to go. I'll come down through these holes and make sure that they're cleaned up top and bottom. And then I'm ready to go again. Now, like I said, I'm not a high production outfit, but I can lose five or 10 minutes on that and it'll stop me when I still have wood on the table or I'm still putting firewood into the bucket of the backhoe. So that's not efficient, right? So uh, we were looking online, looking at some YouTube videos and we saw that uh, there were people that were using conveyors to move the sawdust away, but a conveyor doesn't really fix my plugging issue. And then we saw that you could buy some really fancy blowers from Hacky Pilke to hook up to your system and that would do the trick, but I'm sure that's really expensive. So we were looking at uh, basically dust removal systems for carpentry shops. And uh, we picked up a small one and we're gonna get that set up now and see if it'll handle the sawdust. Alright guys, so let's go take a look at this little blower that we received from Amazon. Okay, so this is the little blower that we ended up buying. It was uh, the cheapest one that I could find, and it looked bigger in the picture than it actually is. This is probably only about 12 inches high and maybe 12 or 14 inches wide. But the ad said, don't let the small size fool you, and it reminded me of myself when I was growing up, so I bought it anyway. Um, it's a three-quarter horse, mini dust collector, and it is a Craft X model. So I was gonna spin this around and just get a shot of the actual make and the size and it seems like pretty durable construction and all I've done is mounted it on a little stand here because I have trialed it already and uh, I've got it shooting at a bit of an angle so that I can shoot the sawdust out away from the processor. Now the other thing that I purchased was some of this uh, clear four inch uh, flexible piping and I've just taken some boards and some tie wraps and hooked onto it because uh, because it is flexible and it moves all around and I'm going to move this I'm going to put this right into the chute of the sawdust collector and get it as close to the chain as I can so let's get this set up I've got that jammed up in there pretty good. Karen will come and take a look at that. So I put that wood right up inside the secondary chute there and the flexible hose is uh, running out. I'm gonna hook it up to the side of the blower. Now when I was saying that uh, they said don't let the small size fool you, this was gonna be a mighty blower and it reminded me of myself when I was growing up. I was a small, small guy for my age, I always was and uh, people always made fun of me, you know, because I was small and uh, they always wanted to do things for me and I took that as a challenge. Um, you know, I figured I could do anything that anybody else could do and uh, I made it my personal challenge to make sure that I, I could and I did. And so uh, I kind of stick up for the small guy now if I can. All right, now we're just gonna run a power cord over here from the generator 
And that's one thing that I don't like about this is I'm going to be running a generator right now using extra gas to throw this sawdust away. But uh, maybe someday we'll get some, uh, some power over to our building and we'll just be able to plug into a cheap source of power instead of using the generator. But let's get a cord strung here. All right, no reason why we can't start this up. Uh, this is a pretty nice generator that Karen got me. Um, she, she's awful good to me. Um, but uh, it idles itself up or down depending on the load on the unit. So we'll just start it up. Let it do its thing. Hey guys, so uh, one of the things that I love about uh, making videos for YouTube is that I actually get to see some of this stuff when I'm editing it and I pick up on things that I probably normally wouldn't. So I'm really interested to get to the editing piece of this whole process so I can actually see this in action because I can't see on the other side of the processor and I can see, you know, bits and pieces of sawdust every once in a while, but I don't know if it's working good or not working good. So this is actually pretty cool for me. Um, I'm taking a look inside and I see a little bit of sawdust built up around the pipe but I think I want that so that that'll keep that pipe in there nice and snug and I'm also looking at this clear flexible line and I don't see anything built up in there like no partial plugage or anything like that now I think that these have something like 560 CFM of force and I don't know if that's good or bad, but if it does the trick for me and the price was relatively decent, uh, I'm going to be pretty happy with that. So I've got to put some more wood on the table and I've got a full bucket in the backhoe. So I'm going to take that and dump it. But I'm really interested to get this piece of maple on the table. It's about an 8 inch piece of maple. And I always have trouble with those big pieces of wood. Like I was saying, it, uh, it tends to clog up the chute a lot more quickly. So if I get that through and I still have a chute that's going to work for us, and none of these lines are plugged, I'm going to call it a win. Stick around.
Okay guys, we've got the table loaded up with wood and like I say, I want to see what these big rounds do now and make sure the blower is going to take that sawdust away. It's going to take me a little while to get into a different routine, right? Because you get your patterns down and now i got to remember i got to start my generator first, start the blower, start the processor, but that'll all come. Um, if this works, it's going to be uh, a really nice improvement for me and remove a lot of frustration because I hate clearing sawdust out of that chute. Okay, let's fire it back up. Okay guys, let's go take a look at the second trial here and see how we did. Okay, so I see a little bit of sawdust over in here this time, but I don't think that's going to hurt us. It's far from being plugged up. There's maybe a half an inch of sawdust there. Um, Karen, can you come over here with the camera? We'll get a shot right down in here and kind of show you what's inside there as well right so there's a nice little squirrel cage it looks like it's made out of some pretty durable metal so I don't think we're gonna do any damage down in there with those wood chips anyway I think that it's working pretty well I'll know more when I edit the video and watch it back but I can see lots of nice fresh chips blown uh, away from the machine I'm still clean down in here and uh, that's what I'm after I don't have to do any manual labor here now to move it away. I don't have to stop and clear a plug chute. And every once in a while I can bring the backhoe in here and just kind of scoop this sawdust down over the bank now. So I think this is going to be a definite improvement. Anyway guys, always interested in your thoughts and feedback when you see what we're doing here in Oak Mountain. So if you don't mind, leave me a comment and uh, maybe you've seen something on the video that I haven't to help us make even further improvements. And uh, I hope that you're enjoying these videos. I know we're having a lot of fun making them and interacting with the YouTube community out there. So thanks for tuning in uh, over and over again and watching our videos. We really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, if you like our videos and you want to see more of them, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share our videos with your friends and family and help us grow our channel. And come on back and check on us often because you never know what. The Oak Mountain Acots are going to be up to next. We'll see you in the next one, guys.